It is the first day of November, and so today, someone will die. Of a sugar-endosed coma from these delicious baked treats. That's, that's not funny. Let me try that again. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. My name is Vendi, and we are officially doing volume two of Bookie Cookin'. Yeah, remember how five months ago I said I was gonna do like a series of baking videos on this channel? Yeah, we're doing it again, finally, starting today. Let it suffice to say that it's fall, my house is lacking baked goods, and I wanna rectify that while also creating some quality content for you guys. As you may have guessed from that awful, awful insensitive intro, today we are going to be making November cakes from Maggie Steve Otter's The Scorpio Races. Now, I'm a long-term Maggie Steve Otter fan, like ride or die, I've been there since the beginning, and I'm talking like before Shiver. I've enjoyed her books for forever, and The Scorpio Races might just be one of my favorite books, and it's definitely my favorite Maggie Stiefvater book. If you don't know what The Scorpio Races is about, it follows a girl called Puck. She and her two older brothers live as orphans on this island of Thisbe, where every year in November, The Scorpio Races take place. These races aren't as fun in games as regular horse races because they are done with riders riding on top the backs of water horses called Kapal Ushka. And these beasts are much larger than regular horses, which if you've ever seen a real horse, you can maybe imagine how big that is. And they uh, eat meat, and they are not discerning about who that meat belongs to. It's all very dangerous and very fun and very bloodthirsty. You know I'm all about that life. Now, Puck has never been a fan of the Scorpio races. She prefers riding horses that eat grass. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, she actually has to end up joining the race if she and her family want to be able to stay on her island home. It also follows a young man named Sean, who is the returning champion of the Scorpio races. And like Puck, he feels he has to win the Scorpio races or else spoilery things will happen that make him upset. I don't want to spoil this book for you, I just want to encourage you to read it. The Scorpio Races, despite its title, actually has less to do with the races themselves than the events and emotions and character interactions that lead up to them. And one of my favorite parts of the book is actually the festival where like the celebration happens right before the Scorpio Races themselves. During this festival, the Islanders of Thisbe make a dessert called November Cakes, and Maggie Stiefvater came up with a recipe for them that I've amended slightly. November Cakes are cinnamon rolls, but instead of cinnamon, and being inside of them, it's full of like orangey delicious goodness. Now I know some of you might not like orange, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be making my November cakes half proper November cakes and half cinnamon rolls. I'll get to the difficult part where I'm splitting up the filling later. For now, I'm gonna show you how to make the cakes themselves. So without further ado, let's get started. To make the cake part of November cakes, you will need some milk. I use whole milk because it's my preference. I'm pretty sure you could do any kind, like 2% or skim if you prefer that instead. Some water, which I'm not including here because it's a relatively small amount. You'll see it when I actually make them. Some yeast, a tablespoon of butter, two large eggs, some vegetable oil, I'm using canola, your favorite all-purpose flour, some sugar, and a little bit of salt. Once you have all of your ingredients, you are ready to begin making your cake mixture. The first thing you want to do before anything else is to preheat your oven to about 100 degrees, maybe even a little less, just to get it kind of warm. If it's as cold for you guys as it is for me, then leaving the dough to sit and rise for an hour is not going to be easy to do at room temperature. So keeping your oven warmed to a relatively low temperature will give you a good place to let your dough sit while it rises. The first thing you need to do to make your November cake mixture is to find yourself a glass bowl. This one actually might be too small. Hold on. Yeah, that's better. Whenever you're making a dough that's going to rise, better safe than sorry. This thing might be massive, but at least I know that it won't overflow. Anyway, what you want to do is to take your glass microwave safe bowl and put in one fourth cup and two tablespoons of your vegetable oil, one tablespoon of butter, half a cup of water, and one cup of milk. Now, I recommend keeping the rest of your butter out because you will need it for the later steps for the filling. Once you've got this like fatty, milky mixture made, you're gonna put it in the microwave for about a minute. When it's ready to come out, you can give it a little mix just to a little bit better incorporate the butter and oil. Adding a little heat helps the butter melt and sort of incorporate into the milk a little better, but the oil obviously is never gonna mix with the water fully. After you've given this another little mix, stick it back into the microwave for another minute. While you're waiting for your liquid ingredients to get all heated up and mixed together nicely, you can mix together your dry ingredients. You wanna add one and a half tablespoons of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one and one half cups of flour. I didn't plan that, by the way. I didn't know that they would all just be sort of in intervals of one and a half. I guess that's one of those fun coincidences, or maybe it has to do with like the science behind baking. If you're a professional-ish baker, let me know if there's something to do with 
ratios that makes this make sense. Put your flour to the side. You will need two more cups of it later on. And the final thing you want to add to this dry ingredients is three teaspoons or one like little packet of active dry yeast. I love the smell of activated yeast. It makes me feel like I'm in a bakery and I love the smell and taste of bakery goods. You want to give this mixture, this little bad boy, a whisk so that all of the dry ingredients mix together well. You're going to be putting it all into your liquid ingredients pretty soon, so it's best if it kind of doesn't go in one by one, though. Again, not a professional baker here. I make no claims to knowing what I'm doing at any point in time. And yeah, when that's all mixed together, you want to just kind of set it to the side because you'll need it in just a minute. By this point in time, your liquid mixture should be out of the oven to sort of get it back to that uniform consistency, give it another stir. And then what you want to do is to take your two eggs and crack it into this mixture. Mm. Okay, that's one. No shell, no shell, ah, no shell inside, please. I did it. Once you've got those two bad boys in there, you want to break the yolks with your spoon and mix them into the rest of the liquid so that it's all one uniform mixture. I guess the trick to baking is to make everything uniform. All right, that looks about beautiful and mixed. When your mixture is as roiling and messed up as the Scorpio Sea right before the Kapalushka come out, that is when you want to add in your dry ingredients mix. Okie dokie. Again, in no way am I a professional, but I found that adding dry ingredients into wet ones a little bit at a time helps me from getting a super lumpy mixture and a lumpy dough. No one wants a lumpy dough. It's kind of icky if it's lumpy. So while we got a little bit of time, let me tell you a couple things about the Scorpio races. So while I was talking to you guys about the like mini brief synopsis about the Scorpio races, I mentioned that our main character is a girl named Puck. Her real name is actually Kate. She's the middle child of the Connolly family. She has an older brother and a younger brother. The reason that they live alone is that their parents died when they were fairly young. Thisbe, the island that they live on, is pretty small. It's kind of like a small town, except the entire island is the town. So they kind of have like a little bit of community support, but the Connollys, and especially Puck, who is a very prickly girl, and you guys know that I love that in my lady characters, sort of keep to themselves. And the problem with essentially children living alone is that it's very hard for most children to make any sort of income. Puck's older brother, Gabe, does basically all of it for the whole of the family. Puck is about, how old is she, 16, 17? It's been a long time since I've read The Scorpio Races. I'll have to reread it before the sequel, The Scorpio Sea, comes out. But I digress, Gabe keeps his little siblings fed and clothed all by himself. And as you can imagine, that's pretty taxing on one person who's little more than a child himself. Oh, it's beginning. It's starting to smell yeasty. The yeast is activated. I didn't kill it. Oh, also, the heating up of the milk, water, butter, oil mixture was to give the yeast something to eat so that it could wake up and turn this into a dough that will rise and spread and become beautiful for making November cakes slash cinnamon rolls. If your mixture is too hot, it will kill the yeast, and if your mixture is not hot enough, the yeast won't wake up in the first place. So you gotta get that balance just right. I find that splitting up the heating um, into two one minute intervals is a beautiful way of making sure that your heat is consistent and just about right. All right, that is all the dry ingredients added in, but we still need to add about two cups of flour to this mixture to get it into a proper dough because right now it's kind of a very loose batter, kind of like pancake batter, but with yeast in it, I don't think you'd wanna do that in your pancakes. So I added in about half a cup at a time. So I'm sorry that I keep going away from the topic. Basically, the island is, like any small town, something that very much depends on the outside world for money. And the problem with Bisbee as a town is the only time outside money and like tourism really comes in is during this one month of the year for the Scorpio races, because it's like a novelty thing. It's their thing. It's when the murdery water horses come out. And the murdery water horses, yes, are very much a Thisbe staple. They only exist in the Scorpio Sea, which is the body of water that surrounds the island of Thisbe. So our man Gabe decides he kind of wants to abandon the family home on the island and try to find a job in the mainland. And it's a tough decision because he and the Connollys, like the family's always lived on the island. They're one of Thisbe's like oldest families, but it's just becoming not very viable for them to stay here. And Puck, of all people, is having a lot of trouble 
accepting this and accepting that they don't have the money. However, if you win the Scorpio races, you can earn a whole bunch of cash. Now Puck has a horse which she'd also have to give up if they left the island. I mean, if you can't feed people, you can't really feed a horse. They're kind of a financial drain. And it's a normal horse, not a water horse, which she hates, Kapalushka. So she decides to enter into the race with her horse named Dove and train her horse, her regular land horse, in such a way that Dove will stand a chance at beating the larger, stronger, bloodthirsty, and terrifying Kapalushka at this race. She believes that if she does this, she'll be able to convince Gabe to let them stay. And it's a bit of a gamble because regular horses don't really run this race, it's very dangerous for them, and also women don't really run this race. It's not not allowed, it's just never been done before. So Puck has to, in addition to getting her horse to function at the level of these larger, faster, demon beasts from the water, she also has to deal with the gross sexism of her male competitors. So that's enough about Puck, and that's also enough stirring. When you're done with your mixing, take your batter and transfer it to a buttered and floured bowl. Make sure that this bowl is also heat safe because it's going to be going into the preheated and since turned off oven to let the dough rise. November cake dough might be a little wetter and looser than the kinds of doughs that you're used to working with, so I recommend using your hands to help the transfer process from bowl to bowl. If you choose to do this, make sure that your hands are floured to have as little bit of the dough sticking to them as possible. When it's fully transferred, cover your mixture with a cloth and stick it in the oven and let it rise for about one hour. Now if you want to use this dough to just make regular cinnamon rolls, for the filling all you'll need is obviously some cinnamon, some powdered sugar, and some butter. However, if like me you're going to be making half cinnamon rolls and half November cakes, you will also need honey, some whipping cream, some more sugar, vanilla extract, yet more butter, and the most important ingredient, orange extract. The ratios and mixtures of these ingredients that I'm going to use are going to make enough of each filling to fill half of the dough that we've made. If you want to make just November cakes or just cinnamon rolls, double the amount of each respective mixture that you make. So we're going to start with the easier filling first, and that would be the filling for the cinnamon rolls. The first thing you want to do is take three tablespoons of room temperature butter and cut them up into small-ish squares, which look kind of like this when you're finished with them. And then you want to add two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. That's another word for just regular powdered sugar. And one tablespoon of cinnamon. Now I'm a cinnamon fiend, so sometimes I just add a little bit more. And part of that is because when you're using like a big thing like this, transference is messy. And another part is I just really love the flavor of it. Either way though, you're just gonna add them in and they're gonna ooh, look like that. Let's not fill my cinnamon sugar. And then you just wanna mix them up. I'm gonna use a miniature fork because it helps get the butter bit mixed. If your butter happens to be a little too stiff, you can just pop the entire mixture into your microwave for about 15-ish seconds. No harm will come of that. This smells so good. <laughs> and uh, once you've got it all mixed together, it should look like that, your cinnamon mixture is ready to go. Ta-da! Keep the fork or spoon or whatever you use to mix it with because you will be using that to put your mixture onto your dough later on. And then comes the even more fun part, making the actual November cake glaze. I say glaze because this is both the filling and the stuff that you drizzle over the top to get nice and melty along with the icing when the cinnamon slash November cakes are ready. The first thing that you want to do for this is to take five and a half tablespoons of butter and get them room temperature and stick them into a little saucepan. To that same saucepan, add a third of a cup of caster sugar and then a nice generous amount of honey, about a third of a cup. I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of tablespoons. This is gonna take a while. All right, so we talked a little bit about Puck. Maybe I should tell you some about Sean. Sean, who is Puck's rival, is not racing to save his home in a literal sense, the way that Puck is. He is racing. Oh, excuse me, squeezing this is more tiring than I thought it would be. So Sean is racing for the rights to keep one of the horses that he races, who he has developed a special bond with. To Sean, that horse is as good as home. Pro tip, to keep your honey from drizzling all over the sides, Stopper it with your finger when you are ready for it to stop flowing places and then have yourself a little snack. I'm gonna go wash my hands now so I don't cross-contaminate things. I'm gonna continue from over here because the next thing you're gonna do with your mixture is put it on a fire and get it cooking for about two minutes. 
I prefer a nice medium heat. The thing about our pal Sean is that his family life is about as complicated as Puck's. So these horses, even though they're, you know, murderous, he still feels a sort of kinship with them because he doesn't have much besides them. And um, he's got a sort of almost supernatural connection with them. The horses understand him and he understands them. So, so the idea of the one that he considers his being taken away from him by a man who has money, sort of taking that away from him is, is as bad as losing her home in Thisbe is for Puck. They have tied so much of their identity into these respective things that the idea of not having it anymore is, is debilitating almost. And the way I'm explaining it, it doesn't make it seem like they're equal stakes at all, right? But when you read them, when you read the way that Maggie Stiefvater has crafted these characters and their motivations and their wants and desires, it very much feels like Sean's claim and need to win these races is just as great as Puck's. We're gonna increase the heat on this and we're gonna trade this spoon for a whisk and stir continuously. Now this glaze gets very sticky very fast and you want to keep stirring to prevent it from getting lumpy and gross. This is still just the butter and sugar mixture and you want to wait until it starts sort of rolling as a boil and then leave it like that for about two minutes. Once it's been boiling just about like this for about two minutes, you get to add your extracts and your heavy whipping cream. That's half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a quarter teaspoon of orange extract, and three tablespoons, pardon me, two, two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. If you're a proper baker, you can actually measure out those amounts. I just eyeball it. It's the slav in me. You want to keep your heat and your stirring thorough until everything's nice and mixed in, like it is now. You take it off the heat, let it kind of settle, and there is your glaze slash filling. It might seem a little wet, because you add yet more sugar to it when you put it in the rolls if you want to. I personally don't like to. I like to just let it thicken by cooling. So this is going to sit until the dough is ready to come out and be filled. You'll know that the glaze is ready for your rolls when it's sort of thickened a little bit. It's no longer quite so liquidy, but it's still nice and warm and has a sort of fluid texture. If you want, this is the point where you can zest in some orange peel to give it a super orangey tang. Once you've got your zest, you can just eat your clementine while you're waiting, finishing for the dough to rise and just stir the zest into the mixture. When I made these last year, I actually had oranges and what I did was for the glaze that I put over the top of the cakes, I used some orange juice and put it into the other half of this mixture and that turned out really well, but you can't really juice a clementine, so I guess I'm gonna skip that part. But if you decide to use oranges, feel free to do it. It makes the cakes even orangier and zestier. You can take your dough out of the oven. It shouldn't be hot anymore because the oven should have been off the entire time it was rising and ooh, oh goodness. You should be able to just reach in with your hand, but if you're worried, make sure that you have a glove on the entire time. Moment of truth. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Oh my god, that rose so much. If your dough has doubled in size, you did a good job, but if it's done what mine did and like tripled or even quadrupled in size, that's even better. I'm not saying it's a competition, but if it were, this dough would be winning. At this point, our pal flour is gonna come back into play and you're just gonna flour this entire surface because this same sticky dough is gonna be just as sticky on the way out. You can be pretty generous with the amount of flour you use and the amount of flour you cover your hands with. There's a reason we put the apron on now. It was so nice and warm in this bowl that it just doesn't want to let go of it. And I completely understand. These cold winter months, you just wanna curl up with something warm. Once you've gotten your dough out here, can knead it a little. And I guess since we're here doing this pretty repetitive task, I can talk to you a little bit about what really tends to be my favorite part of any Maggie Steve Otter book, and that is the setting and atmosphere. You guys know I'm a character-driven kind of girl, and Maggie Steve Otter books tend to be character-driven kind of books, but I think part of their charm is that the settings that they take place in, which are all kind of like our world, but not really, almost magical realistic. Anyway, all of these settings tend to become kind of characters of their own. Thisby, the land and the sort of magic tied with it, you begin to sort of see it as your own home while you're reading it. You can tell why Puck doesn't want to leave. You can tell why Sean feels so rooted to his horses and to this island. And you can totally understand why all these tourists come from all over to see the spectacle that is these races. Maggie Stiefvater has this very atmospheric way of writing. She said that when she writes, she sort of visualizes the whole thing in her head, kind of like a movie. And I think that really comes through. You really feel like you can see and hear and taste 
all of the sort of things that are natural to her worlds that aren't in ours, you believe them. You believe that these things could be real. You believe that there could be flesh-eating demon horses that come out of the water every Scorpio season. You believe that they... I'm just adding a little more flour because it's getting very tacky. You believe that those horses could be endemic to just one island in the entire world and that this island has built a culture and a tourism and a lifestyle around these horses and their coming. You believe their kinship with their land. Maggie Stiefvater is very good at creating worlds where you, even though you are technically a tourist because you're just visiting as a reader, you still feel a kinship and an ownership with the land that you're reading about and the people that you're reading about and their culture. There are very few elements of the setting of the Scorpio races that feel tied to a certain time period. For me personally when I read it, it's like the 1930s, 1940s, maybe 1950s. But for someone else it could be like 2002 when it's happening. And because of this timelessness, the story never feels dated. It's got this sort of magical quality. It's as if the island of Thisbe exists outside of time, which I think is a very magical thing to read about. And this is Joppa, just about where I want it to be in terms of size. What you really want the end result of this process to be is a rectangle that's about 12 inches by 20 inches long. So if you'd like to, you could cut the dough in half and then do cinnamon on one half of the dough and then the November cake filling on the other half of the dough. But what I like to do is sort of mix it all together and have the cinnamon roll filling just go out to about here and then the November cake filling to go from that middle ground outward. The middle cakes, the ones in that sort of neutral territory, get both the cinnamon and the orange filling. And the combination is fantastic. So if you wanted to mix both of these fillings, you totally could. I'm putting down the cinnamon roll filling first. And I like these filled very, very well. So I make sure that I get every little scoop of that buttery, cinnamony goodness. Red that sucker down. For this other half, you just take your goopy November cake orange glaze mixture. Spread that sucker right on top too. When it's ready for rolling, your mixture should look kind of like this where this is obviously the line that you would have split the dough down if you were making two separate batches. So you start at this top end and you flip the clean dough down. Make sure to pinch off any like excess flour and clumps and you slowly and tightly roll down the whole long end. It'll get harder as you go probably because the dough does like to be sticky, but eventually you will have one kind of log on your countertop that you can then slice into place and stick into a greased pan. I have buttered this pan. I'm gonna put it right up here and begin adding in my beautiful roll. Flour your butter knife because this is sticky and then just start chopping. Get your little roll, stick it in your pan. Keep on doing this until you've run out of roll. You can give the rolls a little bit of space in the pan because before you bake them, you are gonna let them rise again. You might have surmised by now that making these rolls is a bit of a labor of love. I think that that's the case with most like traditional festival foods. I like that Maggie Stiefvater has created a recipe and that she's acknowledged that fans wanna be immersed in the series that she's created. Time for some more flour on you. You'll have to regularly reflour your knife because it will get very, very sticky. Also, the way that I'm cutting these is I'm making them about an inch thick uh, widthwise. You can cut them as thick or as thin as you want, it will affect bake time slightly, and I'm not a pro enough of a baker to let you know in what ways and how much. So just keep that in mind when you're cutting your own. God, I always forget how sticky the uh, November cake half of it is. That glaze, man, it'll get you every single time. So this is how mine turned out, where this half, the left half is very clearly the cinnamon roll half, and the right half is very clearly the November cake half. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna cover them with another cloth for exactly 30 minutes so they can rise some more, and then, we're gonna bake these bad boys. So while those sit in there for half an hour, I'm gonna clean my kitchen and listen to my boyfriend make fun of the name of this series. Apparently Bookie Cookin sounds like some Italian mobster being super cute about his tax fraud. I didn't think of that. Hopefully you guys didn't think of that, but there we are. 30 minutes later, preheat your oven to 400 degrees and pull those suckers out of it. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, I love it. I love what bread does when you let it do its own thing. These bad boys are gonna be so delicious. I can't wait to eat them. But we're on the final stretch now. While the oven is preheating to put them in, I'm going to show you guys how to make the icing that'll top the cinnamon rolls. And that one is honestly the easiest part. You take a tablespoon and a half of unsalted butter. So you stick it in a little heat safe bowl and ooh, yeah, test it with a spoon. Mine's a little stiff, so I'm gonna stick it in the microwave. So I just stuck it in the microwave and I figured why not just melt it? So here we have a teaspoon, no, a tablespoon and a half of melted butter. And to that, we're just gonna add about two to three tablespoons of confectioner's sugar or powdered sugar. The amount of sugar you add literally just affects how 
thick your eventual glaze is going to be. I prefer to make mine with a little more sugar, which turns into a little bit of a stiffer mixture at the start, but when you spoon it onto the, um, the cinnamon rolls themselves, the heat of the freshly baked rolls melts the icing very nicely. Also, add a tablespoon of warm water. So that awful joke I made at the start about somebody dying of um, a heart attack induced by a sugar coma. Yeah, that was in reference to the massive, massive amounts of butter and sugar in this recipe. These are not treats you wanna make every week. I mean, if you want to, I'm not gonna judge you. It's just not something that I personally can do with my time crunch. And also, I mean, I just, I couldn't do it. These are very much for other people, more so than myself. Luckily, I have a boyfriend that likes to eat. Looks just about ready, and the preheating is just about done. So I'm gonna put this away next to the orange glaze that's gonna go over the November cakes, and we are gonna put these bad boys into bake. And finally, after all this time, our little cinnamon rolls are ready to go into the oven where they're going to live for 10 to 15 minutes. While you're waiting for them to finish up, you can um, practice riding a horse or you can practice not getting eaten by that same horse. So my oven says this is the end, but really, this, oh, is only the beginning. They need to stay in for a little bit longer. I am happy with how much they've puffed up though. So sometimes you get bamboozled by your oven and by cook times and you have to let your delicious pastries sit in the oven for a couple extra minutes. If that is the case, don't feel bad. Just adjust, improvise, adapt, overcome. I've just been enveloped in like a warm rush of air from the oven and these bad boys look so, so, so good. So to test whether your cinnamon rolls are actually ready to be out of the oven, just take a fork insert it somewhere in the middle, and if it comes out squeaky clean like this one does, it means they're ready. Once that happens, you can leave them to cool for a couple minutes, and then you're ready to ice them. They look kind of great, don't they? Basically, once you get the rolls glazed, I prefer to let them sit for a couple minutes up to overnight in the fridge before eating them, but my boyfriend and I haven't had dinner yet, so we'll see how long we can hold out. Moment of truth. They've been cooling for a little bit, and now my boy and I I'm gonna try one of the November cakes. Well, actually, I'm gonna try it for you. He's camera shy. Oh my god. We should have pulled a bigger one out. Holy shit. Okay, this is mine. You can have your own. So I'm filming the conclusion to this saga with my new partner for life. These delicious, delicious November cakes. But I definitely recommend that you guys make yourselves a batch of these November cakes this Scorpio races season. If you think I did a good job with this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like me, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I don't know when I'll make another bookie cooking because it was like a five month gap between the last one, but I promise that the gap between this one and the next one will not be quite that big. If you decide to make your own November cakes, please let me know. Tag me in your video or your pictures or whatever. I will be delighted to see your creations. I'm, I'm sorry that I keep looking away. They're just, they're so beautiful. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, get a room with these thick girls. So that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you with a new video very, very soon. Goodbye.